like you're lining up a meeting on body sealing, Brad. <laughs> that I am, Tech. It always pays to check a new car for leaks before it's delivered to the customer. Wait a minute, you two. If you're going to talk about body sealing, include me out. I'm a mechanic, not a body man. <laughs> Vince, relax. The sealing service I'm going to talk about is something any mechanic can do. What's more, many of our sealing procedures apply to new Dodge trucks as well as new cars. Now, I'll try to explain sealing practices everywhere. A leak might show up. Just don't get the notion, though, that you're going to find all the leak possibilities on any one car. I get the point, Brad. Now, tell me, where do we start? Well, first of all, you make a visual inspection, particularly of the doors and deck lid, to see that they fit properly. If they don't, correct the fit before you do anything else. Okay. I suppose the fits are good. Then what? Next, you test for leaks to eliminate guesswork. There are three different ways to test. At the doors and deck lid, for example, you can use carpenter's chalk, powder, or water. Tex right. You can chalk the weather strip lip all the way around, for instance. Then close the door or deck lid. Open it to see if there's an unbroken chalk line on the body, indicating good sealing contact. Or you can use a syringe to blow talcum or some other fine dusting powder between the weather strip and the body all around the door or deck lid. Again, if the powder leaves an unbroken line, the seal is good. But traces of powder found inside the line point out places that need sealing. Now, if you use the water test method, just use a stream about the size of a pencil. Never force water into openings. High pressure can force water past a perfectly good fitting weather strip. Another thing, apply water low. Then work upward, gradually. That pinpoints the source of the leak much faster than if you start at the top and flood the whole area. I see. Bottom to top. That's the ticket. And if you use the water test method, correct leaks as you find them. Blow the area of the leak dry. Then use a heat lamp to thoroughly dry it off. Cement won't stick on a wet surface. All right. I'll be sure to dry it off. Attaboy, now use the water test method when you test the windshield, cowl area, belt moldings, rear window, and panel seams. If you've got that straight, let's talk about sealing, starting at the front. For instance, water that shows up on the driver's foot or from behind the instrument panel might be coming in through the fresh air intake opening. The cowl vent panel containing the intake grill opening fits on top of and is welded to the cowl upper panel. Occasionally water might get by the welded seams. If that's what you find, remove the grill. Then reach into the opening and cut away about two inches of the rubber seal from both corners. That will expose a small moon-shaped opening. Clean and dry the area. Then apply body sealer to the exposed seams in each corner. Pack the sealer well into the seams. That all there is? No, other points may need attention. So check for a possible leak into the passenger compartment through openings at the rear ends of the lower struts across the grill opening. Body sealer packed into the openings will do the trick. Besides that, check the seams at the ends of the plenum chamber where the dash panel flange and cowl top panel are welded. Body sealer pressed into the joint as far as possible will prevent any leaks. I see. Also, seal the lower seam formed by the air intake panel and the cowl top panel for a distance of about six inches from each end. Fine. Now, another possible source of leakage is at the windshield opening between the fence and the weather strip. To make corrections here, always remove the moldings. Apply sealer under the weather strip, between it and the metal fence. Occasionally, there are holes in the drip rail where it joins the header, especially at the center directly under the rail. Be sure to fill them with sealer. Also seal the three openings in the center of the windshield fence trough at the bottom. Balls of sealer will do the trick. This prevents leakage that is often diagnosed as a windshield leak. Okay. Any other leak possibilities? Yeah, Vince. Between the weather strip lip and glass, force an approved black weather strip adhesive in there with a gun. After it sets, you can remove any excess by putting masking tape over it, removing the tape, and with it, the excess adhesive. A good tip, Tech. 
Now, here's another point. There might be open seams where the windshield pillars are welded to the roof panel on both sides. Also, down outside the windshield pillars. These seams continue along the side panels to the dash. So apply body sealer the full length of the seams and into the molding attaching slots on both sides. Before reinstalling all moldings, put balls of body sealer at each attaching screw hole. Put sealer on each of the lower molding screws you reach through the fresh air grill opening too. After installing the moldings, cover attaching bolt nuts with sealer. Say, while we're still near the dash panel, don't forget that water might get past the grommets and attaching bolt holes. Oh, sure. In that area, I suppose I just pack body sealer around the fasteners, bolts, and screws that stick out, huh? Right. Seal every point you see that water might leak in. Push grommets firmly in place before sealing. And put a ball of sealer in each grommet hole. Use a gun to apply beads of sealer around the brake master cylinder at the reinforcement. Also, around the accelerator pedal mounting bracket and the hood hinges. Put a ball of sealer over the top fender bolt at the cowl panel under the rear edge of the hood. Check the blower housing seam, too, and apply sealer there if needed. This will prevent engine exhaust fumes from entering the car. Don't overlook the wiper pivots. From under the cowl, loosen the pivot bracket. Replace the gasket and put sealer around the wiper pivot shafts. Also, put some sealer at the molding clips. Don't worry, Brad. I won't miss those places. Good. Now, let's leave the cowl area and look at what can happen to affect the sealing job done by weather strips at the doors. Here again, these tips apply to trucks, too. If your water test at the door, for example, shows that water runs down the trim, the weather strip may be loose at the dog leg, or there might be low spots. Stretching the weather strip there or around corners, installing it in the wrong position or a poor cement job, all can cause that strip to loosen up. If you see any damaged weather strip where it sticks out or is crimped over, play it safe and replace the entire strip. Pull the old one off carefully or use a razor blade to cut it free. Wherever you find a low spot, shim it up with rubber shims, cemented in place underneath the weather strip. Feather the ends of the shim to prevent bulging. Okay, I've got the idea. Fine. Incidentally, for a good cementing job, put a thin coat on both the weather strip and metal. Let each coat become practically dry and tacky. Too little cement is better than too much. You'll get a more solid bond when you install the strip this way. Yeah, and be careful how you install the weather strip. Don't stretch or bunch the strip around the corners or at the dog leg. Stretching pulls the ceiling lip over on its side, and it won't seat properly. I'll watch it. Does that take care of the doors? Well, not quite. Suppose we talk about checking for possible leaks at the front door vent wings. On four-door and club sedan models, you can use powder to check for the source of a leak. Check the weather strip at the top, and at rear corners especially. A weather strip that is uneven will let water get by, to correct any uneven spots, clean the surface. With a gun, apply a black semi-fluid sealer into the corners. When the sealer takes a set, dust powder over it. Close the wing tightly to form an impression on the sealer. That will form a good flat surface and will be watertight. Following that, remove the screw from the top pivot. Cut a shim from rubber stock about 1 16th inch thick. Put it between the gasket and pivot outside the glass. Then reinstall a screw. As you tighten that pivot screw, press the vent glass forward and then securely tighten the screw. This increases compression of the glass on the rubber at both sides. Finally, apply sealer around the upper pivot. That a boy, Brad. Now, somebody please turn the record so we can cover vent wing sealing on other models. We were talking about front door vent wings, Vince. Here's how you seal them on some of our other models. On hard tops, for instance, you'd also use powder to locate possible leaks. Water usually gets by when there isn't enough compression between the glass and rubber. So to increase that compression, roll back the weather strip lip at the rear and at the top. 
put a length of heavy wrapping cord between the rubber and metal inside the body. Remove the screw from the top pivot as you did on the other models. Cut a 1 16th inch rubber shim. Place it between the gasket and pivot. Reinstall the screw. Press the vent glass forward and securely tighten the screw. That increases compression at both sides and at the top. Apply a black semi-fluid sealer at the upper pivot on the door. Suppose water gets in behind the lower pivot and drains down the trim on the inside. In that case, you'd check to see that there's a drain hole drilled through the weather strip and the retainer channel. If there isn't, you'll have to drill one. On Plymouth and Dodge models, drill a one quarter inch hole about nine sixteenths inch forward of and outside of the pivot. On DeSoto and Chrysler cars, drill the same size hole just to the rear and outside the pivot. Here's another fix, Vince. You can correct a leak at lower front corner of a glass and frame by sealing the joint with black weather strip cement. Okay, I'll have no trouble with that. You'll find most window sealing something you can do, Vince. Take that stationary rear quarter window, for instance. It sits in a rubber weather strip in the opening. Leaks there may be traced to improper sealing between the lip of the weather strip and the outer reveal panels, or between the outer reveal panels and the body opening. Water can get on the package shelf, or drain down on the rear wheelhouse and be deflected under the rear seat, or into the luggage compartment. The first step is to use a gun to apply black semi-fluid sealer between the weather strip lip and the reveal panels. Be sure to add a little extra sealer at both lower corners. Then lay a bead of sealer in the seam of the rear door lock pillar reveal panel. Also at the top and bottom of that panel. The next step is to lay a bead of sealer above the curved reveal panel. Paint the bead to match. Also put clear sealer on the seam above the belt line. Suppose I do that and water still gets inside. In a case like that, remove the garnish molding. Take out the quarter window and weather strip and separate them. Pack body sealer into all three corners. In addition, put sealer on the seam at the pillar and against the metal fence all around the opening. Put sealer in the glass groove of the weather strip and install the weather strip on the glass. Put sealer in the fence groove of the weather strip. Next. Install the quarter window and weather strip in the opening and the inside garnish molding. Finally, run a bead of black semi-fluid sealer under the outer lip of the weather strip. Okay, Brad, I've got the picture. Fine. Now on rear quarter windows that pivot, there's no mechanical hinge. The weather strip does the hinging. A toggle lever and strap permits full opening or full closing of the window. Leaks at this pivoting window usually mean too little compression between the glass and weather strip and between the weather strip and quarter panel. How would I increase that compression? You'd remove the aluminum garnish molding. Then move the toggle bracket in toward the center of the body as far as possible and retighten the screws securely. If you have to seal around the quarter window, Vince, use a gun to put black semi-fluid sealer between the weather strip and body opening. Okay, Tech. I'll gun it in wherever it's needed. Attaboy. Now at the rear window, water might enter at the bottom between the fence and the weather strip. From there, it could go to the rear wheel housing, under the rear seat, or into the luggage compartment. If there is a leak at the bottom of the rear window, remove the lower outside molding so you can seal at both lower outer corners. All right. Once the molding's off, how do I go about it? Well, you remove all the old sealer in the trough. With a damp cloth, wash off any soap solution used during installation of the rear window. Sealer won't stick on a soapy surface. Use a wedge or clothespin to pack body sealer smoothly against the weather strip lip. Also, pack sealer in the openings at the lower end of the drip molding, where it joins the roof rail and quarter panel. This is very important. Finally, reinstall the moldings, retaining screws and nuts. Don't forget to put balls of sealer on the nuts in the luggage compartment, Vince. Also on the garnish molding screws at the sides of the rear window. We'll do, Tech. That sounds like a good idea. 
If water was getting between the fence and the upper part of the weather strip, put body sealer or cord type sealer in the channel above the molding. Pack it in place with the wedge and then paint it. Good. Now let's cover sealing at the rear deck lid. Again, make sure the lid fits properly first. Water test with the help of a man inside who can use a flashlight to check for points where the weather strip doesn't make good contact with the lid. Suppose I do find such a spot, Brad. Then you have to shim the weather strip at the point where it is low. That means pulling the weather strip out of the retainer. Okay. I'll shim up the weather strip at any low points, and I'll feather the shim edges before I cement them in place so there won't be any bulging. Good. Now on Dodge, DeSoto, and Chrysler cars, you can cement the weather strip in its retainer. Use very thin coats. Let them get almost dry, and then press the strip into the retainer. On Plymouth cars, the weather strip is simply locked in its retainer and isn't cemented. But there's one place on all cars where Vince ought to be sure he uses plenty of cement. Hey, Brad? Tex right. Be sure to use plenty of cement at the retainer joints. Don't be stingy at those places. Let the cement fill up any open cracks. Okay, Brad. Will do. Never use body sealer at the retainer joints instead of cement. Sealer will affect the sticking power of the cement and the weather strip might come loose. Oh, all right. No body sealer. Say there's one spot where body sealer comes in handy. That's if water gets between the weather strip retainer and body panel. That's usually due to small holes in the plastic sealer. Sealer at those seams will help. Now, you might find you'll have to put balls of body sealer at the side molding clips and studs on the rear fender and quarter panels. Also, seal at the medallion and name studs, the license plate frame and name studs. Besides these, remove the rear fender fin moldings on Plymouth models so you can seal the holes and seams under them if needed. After reinstalling the fin moldings, put balls of sealer on each stud nut. You reach them from inside the luggage compartment. And on some models, remove the rear fender moldings to seal up any seams or openings. On Plymouth models, remove the tail lamp base and put a bead of sealer between the base and fender. In addition, check the joint between the gas tank filler tube opening flange reinforcement and the quarter panel. In this reference book, there is more on how you can seal at that point, along with sealing tips on other body models, like the rear quarter window on the Plymouth two-door hardtop. Good news, Tech. I can sure use that information. a boy. Well, now we've covered all the leak possibilities. Just to give you a complete story, you probably won't find more than one or two of these conditions that need attention on any one car. But when it comes to sealing, always do a careful, thorough job. Our customers look for top service when they put their cars in master technician hands. Let's make sure they always get our very best. <laughs>